Hey, thank you so much for being with us today. Again, we are not in our physical locations, uh, but we are bringing church to your living room. I'm excited that you're tuned in. Uh, service has already been amazing. I hope you've enjoyed the worship as we put our soul and our eyes back on Jesus, focusing on him. And so welcome to Calvary Church Online. I'm excited to get into the message. Before we do, obviously we know that the coronavirus and everything that's going on around the world has put a lot of people in a place of anxiety or fear or stress. I want to remind you we have a prayer hotline. If right now you need somebody to talk to and you say, hey, I would love to text with somebody or if somebody can give me a call, we have pastors on rotation. In Calvary, we believe in helping out one another and in praying for one another. So send us a text to that number and we are going to get in touch with you. If right now you just say, I just need somebody to bounce some ideas off, talk about what's going on in my life, let's do it. Let's talk together. We're here to pray for you and take care of you. I also want to thank you because of your generosity we continue with our community outreach. I want you to stay tuned because we're doing a lot of stuff as a church to help out our city and help out our world. As many of you know, we just don't help a lot of uh, local organizations. We also help out a lot of organizations around the world, churches, pastors, and organizations around the world. And your giving and your generosity helps us to continue to stay strong. Uh, we know that these moments are trying times. We know that there's a lot of people right now that are going through tough moments. But those of us that are able to and can uh, I would encourage you, we're depending on you, and uh, we definitely want all of us right now to continue to give and continue to be generous as the Church of Jesus Christ has to stay strong and healthy to be a light and a beacon in our city. And so in this moment, before we get into the message, I want us to prepare our giving wherever you're at. Uh, to, if you want to give your tithes and offerings through an online link, you're going to see a link below. It's calvaryconnect.com slash give, calvaryconnect.com slash give. And uh, if you want to do it through text, it's super, super easy. There's a number below as well that you can text, and it's super safe and super easy. Again, thank you for your financial contribution. Maybe you're watching, you're saying, hey, I've never given before, but I, I want to continue to give. Uh, maybe you right now can't go physically to help somebody, uh, but your gift can go a long way. Uh, thank you for being generous today as we honor God. I'll pray for our giving in just a moment as all of us across different places in the world are giving together, and that then we'll get into today's message. I actually want you to open up your Bibles. Go to the book of Luke. Go to Luke chapter 8. Wherever you're at, go to Luke chapter 8. I'm excited about today, excited about sharing today's message. Luke chapter 8, wherever you're at, why don't you turn to somebody that may be next to you. If you are with somebody, tell them that they look good today. Tell them that they look amazing. Tell them that you're glad that they're there with you. Go to Luke chapter 8. We're going to continue with this series that we started a couple weeks ago called Nothing is Impossible. And we're still believing that as a church. We still believe that nothing is impossible for our God. We're in the middle of this series and we're talking about Jesus, the miracle worker. Can I tell you, we don't believe that Jesus was just a miracle worker, but he still is a miracle worker. And we're believing that for our world and we're believing that for your life today. So go to Luke chapter 8. We're reading this incredible story in Luke chapter 8. I want you to go down to verse 26. Go down to verse 26. I'm going to begin to read there. We'll read a few verses, then we'll pray, and we'll pray for our giving, we'll pray for our church, pray for our lives, and then we'll get into the, today's message. Beginning in verse 26, I hope you're there. If not, we'll put it on the screens as well. It says, They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and he fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Now many times it had seized them, and though he was chained hand and foot, it kept under guard. He had broken the chains that had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. Then it says in verse 32, a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs. And he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went to the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and they drowned. 
verse 34, when those 10 pigs saw what happened, they ran off. And they reported this in the town, in the countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. And it says, then they came to Jesus, and there they found the man from whom the demons had gone out. He was sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they were afraid. Luke chapter 8, these verses that we just read, I love it. We're looking at the miracles that Jesus did while he was here with us. Today, out of this story, I want to share a message that's on my heart. And I've titled this message, Still Standing. Come on, I'm excited about that. Still Standing. Why don't you look at somebody around you and tell them, I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm going to pray. Let's pray for our giving. Let's pray for this word. And uh, pray that you would have an awesome Sunday. And then we'll get into today's message and then close out. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this service that we're having as we do Calvary Church online. I thank you for each and every single person that's watching. I thank you for your goodness and your grace. God, we're believing for healing across our world. We're believing that somehow, some way, you're going to turn us around. We're, we're believing for a miracle today, God. And I'm praying for all those that have been affected, are being affected. Continue to give them grace and strength in Jesus name. I thank you God uh, for those of us that uh, still uh, you blessed us and we can be a blessing to others. God bless our giving today. Multiply it as all of us give our tithes and our offerings and we continue to be obedient to you that you would bless it so that it can go out to our communities and churches and organizations around the world. Multiply it God. We thank you God and we know that with you we can still be standing. We love you and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's get into today's message. As many of you know, the world has changed. The world has changed. It is not the world that we knew of just a few weeks ago. Just think about it. A couple of weeks ago, we were in movie theaters. We were in buildings together. We were in church auditoriums together. But all that has changed. The world has changed. How do you deal with change? Maybe change has come into your life personally because of this situation. How are you dealing with the change? I don't know about you, but me personally, I've never liked change. I've always had an issue with change, and it's not until recent years where I got better with it. But growing up, I absolutely hated change. I grew up with a Hispanic mother that absolutely loved change. She loved change. And I remember I would get home and all of a sudden, I would get home, and a couch was now somewhere uh, on another part of the house. I would get home, and my room was completely flipped upside down. The bed was somewhere else, and my dresser was somewhere else. I would get home, and the kitchen was now completely in a different part of the house. My mom loved change. Absolute. I felt like I was walking into a new home every single month. Like, it's just a brand new house. My mom loved change. And for one reason or another, I, I didn't like it. I absolutely hated change. But can I tell you, some change is good. I'll even go as far as saying this. Some change is absolutely necessary, right? You have to change the tires in your car. Hopefully, you're changing the engine oil in your car. We have to change our clothes, and I hope we're doing that. We have to change our air filters, for example. Some change is absolutely necessary. How are you dealing with the change that's happening in your life? What are you doing with the change that's happening around the world? In fact, I'll put it this way. The thing with change and the thing that comes with change is that you can either cower down with change or you can stand up with courage with change. You can either pull back or you can decide to go forward when change happens. The truth is that when life begins to look a little bit different, one of the things that begins to happen is that our biggest enemy begins to show up, and that enemy is fear. I want to tell you today, enemy, the enemy is fear, and fear is a huge enemy in your life and in my life, and it comes to deceive us, and it comes to lie to us. Can I tell you today, fear talks. I don't know if you've heard that before, but fear will talk. Fear will come up to you and tell you you're not going to make it out of this. Fear will speak to you and tell you this is how life is always going to be. 
Fear will come and tell you you're never going to get out of this situation. Fear will say this is bad change and your life is always going to look like this bad, horrible thing. Fear speaks. Fear will come and whisper in your ear and tell you, are you ready for the worst? Fear will whisper to you many times. It will scream to you as well and it will tell you to stop. Fear is one of our biggest enemies. In fact, I believe that a big problem happens, and this is the big problem that happens, is that fear lies in order to paralyze our lives. Fear will lie to us. Fear will come and say, you don't have enough money. You're not going to make it. Fear will come and say, hey, you're never going to make it out of this certain situation in your life. Hey, your marriage is going to end up in divorce. There's, there's no reason you should work on it. Fear would come and Fear would say, hey, this, this situation with your kids, it's ne not going to get better. Fear will come and lie to us in order to destroy our lives. Fear is a liar. I want to tell you today, fear is a liar. What are you doing when fear lies? It will come and it will destroy your life if you listen to it. And here's the thing. We can either cower down, we can either crouch down when change happens, or we can have courage to stand. We can have courage to believe. We can have courage with change. In other words, I'm going to have courage even if the situations around me change. See, I, I may not be able to go to work, but with courage, I'm going to be the best employee at home. I may not be able to send my kids to school, but with courage, I'm going to be the best mom possible at home. I'm not a good teacher. I don't know what the homework that they're working on, but I'm going to be the very best mom I can. I'm going to be the very best that I can. See, when you have courage in the midst of change, you look for opportunities. They're not obstacles. They're opportunities. When, when you have courage in the midst of change, you say, I may not have a lot of money, but I'm going to stand in God's word. I'm going to stand in his promises. I'm going to stand and trust in him that if he feeds the birds of the air, he's going to take care of me. If he dresses the lilies in the valley, he will take care of my life. I'm telling you today, we need to be people that have courage in change. In fact, I'll say this. I'll say this. We don't submit to fear. We stand in faith. If there's something I want you to get today, it is this. We don't submit to fear, but we stand in faith. Can I tell you, the world today is looking for people who have faith. The world today is looking for people that have courage. The world today is looking for people who believe. People who are not going to crouch down or cower down because of fear, but people who stand up in faith and say, I know where my trust is. I know who my God is. I know that he's for me. I know that he's with me. And because he's with me. I'm going to stand in faith. Everything around me may be crumbling. The stock market may be crashing. It looks like people are getting laid off. It looks like people are depressed and discouraged, but I'm still standing. Oh, come on. Is anybody still standing today with me? I am still standing. With change, I'm going to have faith. With change, I'm going to stand. With change, I'm going to believe God that change, it just represents an opportunity for God to shine his light. Oh, come on, today we're going to be people who stand. Come on, tell somebody, I'm still standing. And today I'm believing that we're going to be people that stand in faith. Come on, I'm excited about it. Empty auditorium, but I know at home I can feel you or wherever you are. I am still standing in faith. In the book of Luke chapter 8, we're about to see change happen. The change that's about to happen here is drastic. It's, it's major, but this is... Such a good change. I love this story because this is so awesome what Jesus does. The Bible says that Jesus, he gets in a boat and he goes to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Me and Dan, a few months ago with about 40 friends from our church, 40 people from our church that said, hey, we want to go to Israel with you. We went to the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is massive. It's huge. And uh, we got on the boat and we were able to go around the Sea of Galilee. It is a huge, huge lake. And so when Jesus gets on a boat and says, hey, let's go to the other side, it is completely on the opposite side. It's almost a whole another region. The Bible says in Luke chapter 8 that Jesus, he gets on the boat and he goes to this other side. One of the other gospels that shares this story calls it the other side. I love that it calls it the other side. Because this other side wasn't a, a popular side for Jewish people. Like this other side was unclean. It wasn't kosher, 
right? It had cemeteries. It had a herd of pigs, as we just read. And it had uh, things that were considered unclean for Jewish people. This is Jesus, who's a Jew, with 12 Jewish friends. And they're getting on a boat, and they're going to the other side. I can imagine the disciples on the boat, like, we're, we're going to, to that side. That's the side that none of us want to go to. That's the side that nobody goes to, Jesus. Why are we going to that side. Can I tell you? Because Jesus isn't afraid of broken, messy, and unclean places. Maybe today you're watching and you're saying, well, people really only know one side of me. People don't know that side of me. Maybe people don't know the broken side of you. Maybe people don't know the side of you that is afraid. Maybe people don't know the side of you that is, that is still crying in fear. Maybe people don't know the side of you that is ashamed and full of sin and guilt. And you're saying, well, I can't let people into that side. Can I tell you, we have a Jesus that is not afraid to go to that side. Come on, today he wants to go to that side and bring life. Today he wants to go to that side and bring hope. Today he wants to go to that that side and bring some situations back to life. Come on, this is the Jesus that we serve. He's not afraid into stepping into unclean places. Come on, the God that we serve is a God full of life. The God that we serve is a God full of hope. The God that we serve, he will step into any situation and he'll turn it around. Come on, if you believe that, can you give God a praise right there where you're at? Come on, this is the Jesus that we have. He steps into the other side. The Bible says that, that when they get to the other side, it says as they're docking the boat, there's this man that comes out. Now, this man is possessed by demons, like not one demon, but many demons. He's possessed by demons. This is a bad condition. He's been chained down. He's, he's an outcast. He's living out in solitary places. He's out by the graveyards, ostracized from society. People were afraid of him, but yet Jesus, he's not afraid. This man, he's possessed. The definition of the word possessed, it literally means to have and to hold as your own property. It literally means to seize and to take control of. To seize and to take control of. Today, you may say, well, I'm not possessed by a demon. And maybe we're not possessed by demons, even though that's very real. But I wonder if today something has possession of you. Something else can take possession of you. Something else can oppress you. Right, It can become a weight in your life, and it can stop you, and it can say, hey, I now declare you as my own. I wonder today if fear is possessing you. I wonder today if anxiety is possessing you. Maybe today you're at home, and worry and stress is possessing you. And you're sitting there like, I, 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 I don't know. I, I want to move forward, and, and I, I want to get to a new place in my life. And all this change is happening, and these things just keep holding me back. Who's in control of you? Who owns you today? Maybe fear has gripped your soul the same way that the demons have possessed this man. Maybe anxiety, stress has you gripped the same way that this region was afraid of this demon-possessed man. And I love it because Jesus shows up on the scene. And anytime Jesus shows up, he always brings change. Come on, that excites me. I don't know about you, but Jesus always brings change. And Jesus shows up in this story because he's about to break the cycle. I want to share with you three quick things, and then we'll wrap it up and have an incredible Sunday. Three quick things as Jesus breaks the cycle. See, I love this because as Jesus is docking his boat, the Bible says that the demon-possessed man goes to Jesus. He meets up with Jesus. That tells me that the man, he is done with his condition. Like, have you ever been there where you're just like, I'm fed up, I'm done, I'm not staying in this place anymore? The man, he meets up with Jesus, and the Bible says that he falls down to his knees before Jesus. Today, if you want to break the cycle of your life, today, if you're saying, I'm not staying here, change is happening, but, but I don't want to cower down. I want to have courage to stand in the midst of that. The first thing that we need to do in order to see a miracle and in order to have courage, the first thing is that you need to refuse to bow. Come on, tell somebody, refuse to bow. Refuse to bow. What are you bowing down to? What is it that you're bowing down to in your life? What are you giving into? 
I think today we need to make a decision. I refuse to bow. I'm not going to continue to do this anymore. Maybe it's, it's to be possessed or paralyzed by fear. Maybe it's to live in anxiety. Maybe it's this thing that keeps holding you back. Today say, I refuse to stay the same. I'm not going to bow down to fear. I'm not going to bow down to anxiety. I'm not going to continue in depression. Today I refuse to continue in this place. I refuse to remain in chains. Come on. I believe that there's life in Jesus. I believe that there's hope in Jesus. You don't have to continue in the same place. What chains have you bowing down to the same things? See, real change happens, I believe, when the pain of continuance is greater than the pain of change. You may not like change. You may not welcome it in your life. But when you get fed up of staying in the same place for so long, oh, you welcome change. And you say, you know what? I need to get out of this place. I refuse to stay like this. Get tired of staying the same. Get tired of bowing down to the same old fear. Get tired of living in anxiety and say, wait, I think there's life in this man called Jesus. I think there's hope in this guy called Jesus. Come on, I'm excited in this building today. I hope you're excited with me in your home or your workplace. Come on, there is hope and life in Jesus. And if you run to him, he will help you to now bow down only to one name. And he will help you to have life. He will help you to have hope. He will help you to have feeling. This man, I love it because as soon as he, Je he sees Jesus, he makes a decision to run to Jesus. Today, make a decision. Make a decision. Today, say, I'm, I'm making a decision. Today, I want to tell you, your decisions today will shape your tomorrow. What decisions are you making today that's going to determine who you are tomorrow, what you do tomorrow? Say, I refuse to stay in this addiction. I refuse to stay in this bondage. I, re I refuse to stay in this fear. I refuse to stay in anxiety. I'm making a decision today. I refuse to bow down. Refuse to bow down. Don't be that person that's always double-minded. The book of James chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Can I tell you, God doesn't want you to be unstable. God doesn't want you to cower down. Come on, there's a Jesus that shows up to bring good change to your life and say, today's the day where I make a decision to run to him. Today's the day where I refuse to bow down to the things that have me in chains. The man runs to Jesus because he needs help. The demons have overtaken him and he needs massive amounts of help. But he says, I'm, I'm not living in this place anymore. I'm not going to stay in the graveyard. I'm, I'm running to the one that I heard that is hope, life, peace, mercy, and grace. I'm running to Jesus. Today, some of us, we need to run back to Jesus. Refuse to stay in the same place. I refuse to bow down. The Bible says that Jesus actually starts a conversation with these demons. It's a crazy situation. I really think that there's a lesson in everything that Jesus did. He did it on purpose. He asked this man, what is your name? And the one who answers are the evil spirits in the man. And they say, our name is Legion. My name is Legion. And literally what that means, it's thousands. It was a Roman military term that represented anywhere from 4,000 to 6,000 soldiers. In other words, this man is possessed by a whole lot of demons. Maybe that represents a lot of us today that we have a whole lot of fears in our life. You're afraid of tomorrow? You're afraid, what, what happens if I lose my job tomorrow? What happens if this thing stays like this for another four months? Maybe today it's anxiety. Maybe today it's worry. Maybe today it's addictions, bad habits. And today you're saying, whoa, I got, I got a bunch of stuff on me. You know what I love? That this thing represented a major thing in his life, but yet there was one that had more power than the legions in this man. The second thing, to receive your miracle. The second thing, so that we know that nothing is impossible. Number two, is that you need to recognize the power. Come on, recognize the power. Legion represented many. Legion represented so much. People try to help this man in the past. He had chains on his hand, on his feet, but yet nothing could hold him down. Nobody can help this man. Nothing in the world could do it. They tried, but it was powerless compared to the power in the things that were in him. Maybe you're saying, Alex, I've tried it all. I've gone everywhere. 
and everything that I do is it's powerless. I've tried all kinds of things and, and nothing seems to help me with this fear, with this anxiety, with this issue, with this addiction, with this sin, with this habit. I, I can't seem to get out of this. I really think that a lot of times, a lot of us, we have more faith in our problems than we have faith in the power of our Jesus. Today, maybe you have more faith in the power of your problems than you have faith in the power of Jesus. Can I tell you that when Jesus shows up on the scene, that fear in your life is afraid of the power of God. I want to tell you, your fears have fears. And what it is afraid of is Jesus. Come on, it's the name that is above every name. It's the name that one day every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Maybe for you it seems like an impossibility, and because you think it's impossible, you think, well, it's impossible for God as well. I can't shake this. I can't break this. I can't get over this. And because it's impossible for you, you think it's impossible for God, but I'm here to tell somebody that what may be impossible with man is possible with God. We have a God that's powerful. We have a God that's mighty. We have a God that is above everything on earth. Can I tell you the name of Jesus is above your fear. The name of Jesus is above your anxiety. The name of Jesus is above your addiction. The name of Jesus is above Corona. The name of Jesus is above everything on this earth. And everything has to bow its knee at the name of Jesus. I don't know what you have in your life. Can I tell you the name of Jesus has more powerful. Come on, if you believe that, Give Jesus a big, big praise wherever you're at. Come on, he's a good God. He's a powerful God. There is no one like our Jesus. He's powerful. He's mighty. He's awesome. This man, everything was powerless until Jesus showed up. Come on, he's going to show up in your life today. I really believe that. He shows up and Jesus frees the man in a moment. Jesus just free. Maybe you're, you're in this situation that I'm never getting out of this. And you think that this thing has more power than Jesus. Do you have more faith in the power of your problems or do you have faith in the power of your Savior? I've shared this story before. I remember one time I was hanging out with some friends and we took his Jeep and we went down this dirt road and we got lost all the way down this dirt road and we got stuck in the mud. And we were there for, no lie, I mean, it first started about 20, 30 minutes, then it went to an hour, hour and a half trying to get his Jeep out of the mud. And we started to get afraid. We're like, okay, the sun is starting to set. We were still young. We shouldn't be out this late and parents calling and we're stuck in the mud and we're afraid to say it. And finally we called one of our friends and our friend showed up with this monster truck. Like I'm gonna talk about just a monster truck. Here we are looking at this mud, thinking the mud's got us stuck. We can't get out of this. We're going to be in this situation forever. I'm losing my truck. It's not coming out. And all of a sudden, this monster truck came. And it grabbed some rope, and it tied it to the car. And within moments, dragged us out of the mud. Can I tell you, that's who Jesus is. Jesus will show up in your life. He will tie himself to you and he'll say, don't worry about it. It's not in your strength. It's in my strength. It's not in anything that you can do. It's in what I can do. Today, what you need to do is that you need to recognize the power that there is in the name of Jesus. Jesus showed up and the man is free. The man is free. I love this story. Jesus changes his life. Today, change is happening. Can I tell you, if you invite Jesus in your life, it can be changed for the better. The town is crazy. People can't believe it. Like, what happened? This is the man that was possessed by demons. I love the end of the story. What we read, it says that they come, and now they see this man that was once naked, bound in chains, cutting himself, that lived in the graveyards. Now he's, he's hanging out with Jesus. Just a few moments later, he's fully clothed and hanging out with Jesus. And I love what the Bible says. The Bible says he was in his right mind. I don't know who's watching this today, but I really feel this with all my heart. He wants you to be in your right mind. Maybe your mind's been on the news. Maybe you've been looking at Twitter all day long. Maybe you've been listening to all this negative information. And I tell you, he wants you to be in your right mind. Jesus will show up in your life. He'll make a miracle happen and he'll leave you in your right mind. 
think we need to refuse to bow. We need to recognize the power. Third and finally, I'll close with this. We need to rest in the grace. Rest in the grace of Jesus. This man is sitting fully clothed at peace in his right mind. Today you're saying, I'm, I'm tired. I've been living this way. I, I've been living with this addiction. I've been living with these chains. Fear has been lying to me. It's been deceiving me. I love what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Today, there's some of you that are watching that Jesus is saying, come to me. Come to me, and I'll give you rest. Come, come rest in the grace that's in Jesus. You, you can't carry this life alone. You can't carry this weight alone. There's a God who loves you. There's a God who's for you. The end of the story actually says that he wants to go with Jesus on the boat and return with Jesus to the other side. And Jesus says, no, 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 I need you to stay here because now you're going to tell the town what I've done in your life. Can I tell you right now the world around us may look like it's crumbling. It may look like it's going into chaos. Now's the time where we're going to stand up with courage and say, can I tell you there's a God who put me in my right mind. There's a God who gave me peace. Now's the time for Calvary Church. Now's the time for the church of Jesus Christ around the world to call a friend, text a friend, and tell him, hey, it's going to be okay. There's a God who loves us. There's a God who's for us. Come on, we're, we're called to be a light and a witness today. Because I'm resting in his grace. Today, can you rest in the grace of Jesus? There's people watching right now, and I'll close with this. I would love to pray for you. If you're watching today and you're saying, Alex, I don't know this Jesus. I don't have a relationship with this Jesus. I want to tell you today, God loves you so, so much. You may not know God, but I want to tell you today, he knows you. He even knew you would be watching this. He loves you that much that he wanted you to watch this so that you would know that he loves you. God loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. There's a God that's madly, deeply in love with you. He knows all that you've done, even the things that nobody else knows. But the Bible says that sin separates us from God. God loves us, but yet our sin, it separates us from him because God can't be with sin. But God loved us so, so much. The Bible says that he sent his one and only son, Jesus. Jesus came down to earth and he grabbed my sin, your sin. The Bible says that Jesus carried the sins of the world on his shoulders. Oh, come on. He carried all of our guilt, all of our shame. Jesus carried everything you've done, the things people know about, the things nobody knows about. Jesus, he carried our sin, our shame, our guilt. The Bible says that Jesus put it on his shoulders and he went up on a cross at a place called Calvary. And Jesus died for my sins. Jesus died for your sins. All of us are sinners. There's not one perfect person on this earth. All of us are sinners. But yet Jesus died for us. The Bible says that Jesus died there on that cross. And then they brought him down and they put his body in a grave. And it looks like sin and death had won. But after three days, Jesus Christ he came up out of that grave. He defeated sin and death for me and for you. I want to tell you today, if you're watching, Jesus is alive. He loves you so, so much. He's in love with you. Today, he wants to bring a good change in your life. Today, he wants you to, to say, I'm still standing. It doesn't matter what's happened in life. It doesn't matter what chaos has broken out. I can still stand in the promises of Jesus. Come on, if he, dis, if he defeated sin and death, today he can, he can help you to stand no matter the situation. Today, you're saying, Alex, how, how can I have forgiveness in my life? Alex, how can I begin life again? I will love a relationship with Jesus. I want a relationship with God. Can I tell you, there's a God who's waiting with arms open wide. He loves you so much. And you're saying, Alex, how can I have this relationship? It's putting your faith and your trust in Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Today, if you're watching and you're saying, hey, I want to make that decision. I want to put my faith and my trust in Jesus. I want forgiveness for my sins. I want to begin again. I'm going to say a simple prayer. And wherever you're at, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. You can talk to God any place, anywhere. I'm just making this first prayer easy for you. Come on, why don't we all just close our eyes and right there in your living room, in your room, maybe in your workplace. Repeat this prayer with me, and let's talk to God. Say this out loud with me. Say, Father, thank you for today. Thank you 
for this opportunity. I admit that I'm a sinner and that my sin separates me from you. Jesus, I believe you're the son of God, that you died for my sins, and on the third day, you resurrected. Come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. From today on, I'm forgiven, I'm saved, and I'm healed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, we're so glad you made that decision today. If you said that prayer with me, if you made that decision, if you want to start that relationship with Jesus today, if you're saying, hey, I want that relationship with the God who loves me. It's not a relationship with a church. It's not a relationship with a pastor. It's a relationship with the God who loves you. We want to congratulate you and we want to come alongside of you. We would love to be alongside of you on this brand new journey. In fact, we have a free gift for you. There's going to be an email that comes up and I want you to send us an email. Send us a quick message and say, hey, I did that prayer. You don't have to give us all your info, none of that. We would love to send you a free Bible. No strings attached. We love you here at Calvary. We believe that the best is yet to come for your life. Send us an email below and say, hey, I did that prayer today with Alex. And I want to start a relationship with God. We love a Bible. We're going to send a Bible to you. We would love to put one in your hands. Everybody else, we love you very, very much. I'm believing that, that miracles still happen. And I'm believing that you can still stand no matter what's happening in the world around us. Come on. I believe that we're going to be people of faith. I believe that we're going to be people that don't cower down, but people that stand up. I'm praying for you this week. I pray that you have the best week of your life. Come on, let's be people that stand strong. Everything else may break loose, but we will remain standing. I love you very much. We'll stay in touch this week. And uh, throughout the week, we'll keep you updated with things that we're doing. We love you. Calvary Church Online happening every single Sunday. And so we will see you very soon. We love you. Stay safe. God bless you.